Okay, so I just found this one. Let's see if this one is going to work for us. All right. Um, all right, so one thing we're going to, this uh, says it is sex linked recessive inheritance. So that's what we're looking for. I'm not going to be able to draw very neatly. My uh, marker is really thick. I wonder if I can change that. Probably not. Anyway, um, so one thing that I know for sure is we've got an X. I'm going to use H. There's our little H and a Y. Sorry, not very legible. And this is going to be an XX. Now, I'm not going to put anything there right now because we're going to have to look at mo excuse me, goodness, modes of inheritance before we get up and figure out what mom up there has. Let's go through this first, though. We've got X, Y, X, X. X, Y, X, X. X, 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 Y. I also have X, 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 Y. And let's just hold it right there, because this is the arm that we can reach down to for right now. So right now, I know that this guy right here has to be dominant. He's not showing, and there isn't a carrier. So what that tells me is that mom at least has one dominant allele up there. Um, but I also see that this mother must be a carrier because this boy right here, let's take a look at him a second. He is going to be affected, so that's going to be a capital H. I know that's hard to read. I'm sorry. It's a pain in my patootie. Um, it's going to be a capital H, or lowercase h, sorry. See? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, anyway. So it's an XY, and he has a recessive allele. Now, he obviously got the Y from his dad. This Y right here came down. That's where we get this one from. So he must have gotten this affected allele from this mom right here. So this mom has to be a carrier. So we found one carrier already. So I'm going to write her in. Make this a little more obvious. Now remember, the reason that I thought that is she's not showing as affected, but she has a son that is affected. The only place a son gets an X chromosome is from their mother. The Y chromosome comes from dad. So I look at his mother, at his mom, and she has to have given him that recessive allele. So we know that she's heterozygous. So then when we look at this young lady right here, um, then we're not too sure. She could be, we know she's got one dominant allele and she could be 50%. There's a 50-50 chance that she could be a carrier or normal. So we don't know that one for sure. Um, if we look over at some of the others, I haven't even decided if we, well, we've already found out that she has to be heterozygous because she's not affected. Um, no, nope, we have not found that out yet. If she does not have any affected sons, then there's a pretty good chance that she is not a carrier, but we don't know that for sure. So here's an example of kind of a dead end. We could go through and we can figure out that this one has to be dominant, but again, we don't have any affected individuals at the bottom. So that's about as far as we can get with the sex-linked inheritance. Um, let's try another one. I'm going to do this one. Let's say we've got...
Okay, so let's work our way through. Once again, we can, this guy is going to be an X, Y, I'm going to switch colors. And he has to be affected, so I'm going to put the little H, because he has to be affected. We're looking sex linked. Remember, this is sex or X linked recessive. Okay. Um, then our mom is going to be XX. We don't know her alleles for sure right now. Um, I can, you can make a pretty good guess just by looking at it. Um, but let's just go through what we do know. Here's an X, 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 Y. X, Y. Now here's a young man who is affected. So he's also going to have a lowercase h. Now it's tempting to say, well, he must have gotten it from his dad because they both are affected by this disorder. But the only sex chromosome this young man got from his dad was that Y. So he must have gotten that recessive allele from mom. So now we know, whoops, now we know mom's, um, sorry, I got in my way. Now we know mom's alleles. She has to be heterozygous. She has to be a carrier because she isn't showing or that would be filled in. Yet she has a son who is affected. Remember when it's sex linked, if you have a son that is affected, the only place the son gets an affected X chromosome is from mom. That's the only place he gets any of his X chromosomes is from mom. He gets his Y from dad. Okay, so we know this one. We now have figured out mom. Um, there's really no way to know here unless she had some children that maybe we could tell if she was potentially a carrier or not. If she had any boys that were affected, then we would know right away she was a carrier. Um, so that's what we can see over here. Here's our XY. We know that he is affected, so that's a lowercase h on there. That's what that's supposed to be. Um, and since he is, this guy has to be normal. Um, since this one is affected, though, his X chromosome comes from mom, so he must get this lowercase h from mom. And since she isn't showing, we would call her a carrier. So we just figured out that one. Now we can head over to this one over here. Dad is normal. And when they marry in, you tend to assume that they're normal. And since all of the parents' alleles are normal, we can predict that the offspring will have this allele combination. They'll all be dominant normal. Okay. So hopefully that gives you an idea, um, along with the practice problems on the page. Um, let's look at blood type. Okay, so we talked about um, that the different blood types, the genotypes are So these are all the possible genotypes when we write the genotype out like this. All right, but the phenotype is what the actual blood type would be. So the phenotype is the blood type. So the blood type for these two is oops, type A because remember the O is recessive. And these are going to be type B. Again, here the O is recessive. This one, though, is going to be type AB. 
because A and B are co-dominant. This one gets, that's where blood gets tricky. You got to remember that. That's just something you have to memorize. And then O is recessive. So the only way we get an O blood type is if you have two recessive or two O type alleles. Now we can have our type O blood type. All right, so let's do a problem where we're going to practice using that information. You can um, rewind back or hopefully you have that in your notes anyway. But let's say you have, um, for blood type, let's say a mom with hetero, sorry, that should be hetero, heterozygous. Type A, dad with heterozygous type B. So when we look at type A, let's scroll back again. Type A, heterozygous. So these are type A right in here. And the only one of those that's heterozygous is the AO. So there's our blood, there's our genotype. So let's start our Punnett square with our genotype. Um, mom is on the side, so we have I, A, and O. There's her genotype. And dad is same thing, heterozygous type B. So we look at type B. The only one that's heterozygous is the BO, because O is recessive. So we have A or IB, IO. We fill this out. You still always put the dominant first. All right. So then we would say that the genotypes are um, AB, AO, BO, and OO. The phenotypes are type AB, type A, type B, and type O. 25% chance of each. And then, you know, you could ask different questions. What are the chances of having a type AB offspring? What are the chances of having a type O offspring? In this case, it's 25% chance each, unless I, let's see. Yeah, that would be, they have a chance of having, 25% chance of having each different um, blood type. Oh, we can do uh, another one where, uh, let's say mom is AB. And dad is type O. So let's do a pun and swear. The only way you can get type O, remember these are autosomal, so we aren't putting X's and Y's. This is where we just use the normal letters because it's just the normal chromosomes. All right, and mom is A. B. So we fill this out. All right. So for this one, you would have a 50% chance of having this genotype. AO, and 50% of having this genotype, BO. So you have a 50% chance of being type A, a 50% chance of being type B. So hopefully that will help you figure out some more of those problems. Um, let's say I was going to give you a problem where I told you um, that we were looking at fur color in squirrels. Oops. In squirrels, 
Uh, where? Right. So first of all, right off the bat, we can already tell is what type of dominance is this? When they blend, if it's heterozygous, here's our heterozygote, and it's a blend of the two, then it is incomplete dominance. So let's say I gave you a problem where mom is gray and Dad is white. So we make a Punnett square. Whoops, lost ya. Mom is gray, so gray is already given to us, B, W. And dad is white, there it is, W, W. We fill it in. All right, so this offspring has a 50% chance of having the heterozygous genotype, a 50% chance of being homozygous white for the genotype, WW are the alleles, and then the phenotype is 50% chance gray and 50% chance white. All right, one more. Let's do one more with the codominance. So let's use the red and white flowers that I was talking about before, where RW is red and white, and WW is white. So looking at this already, because the heterozygote shows both, this is co-dominance. So let's say mom is red, dad is both. Sorry, I'm trying to hurry, otherwise I would write red and white. We make a pun and square. We know that dad is red and white, so there would be his genotype. Mom is red, this would be her genotype. We fill it in. All right, the genotypes are RR, RW. Those are the possible genotypes. The possible phenotypes are 50% chance of being red and 50% chance of being both red and white. All right, so hopefully that gives you a little something to go on. Um, I might put another video on a little bit later with a little bit more review just in case. Um, so. It's worth checking back later, and if unless it is already late Monday night, then it's not going to happen. But if it's uh, five o'clock on a Monday night, then I might still have another one to post. All right. All right.